All right, let's do this. Well, I'm back here, Mike and Bill, and I'm Bill, and, and I'm here with Mike. And yep. we are so excited about today's topic because it's a follow-up to last week. We talked about this really cool passage, one of my favorites in, in Acts 3 and 4, where the two disciples, Peter and John, had an incredible experience on an ordinary day when God did something miraculous and and what ensued was really the kickoff to them doing incredible things in their ministry post Jesus being physically there with them. And yeah. so the, the, the topic last week was ordinary men doing extraordinary things. And we talked about how uh, really the, the thing that made the difference for them was, and it was noted by the religious leaders, like, how is it that these just regular guys with no training and, and, and didn't seem like they've got any real reason to, to be something incredible, how is it that th this is happening? And it said, but they took note that these men had been with Jesus. And so, yeah. and so today we're going to talk about this idea of, well, how can we be people that God uses in extraordinary ways? And, and, and we're going to say that we think that the way that's going to happen is we got to be with Jesus. We yeah. got to be people that are with Jesus. And, and to the extent that we are, quote, with Jesus, to that extent, we're going to be um, used by God to do extraordinary things. And so uh, we've kind of we've kind of uh, boiled it down. There's lots and lots of things we can talk about it. We've kind of boiled it down to to three things. So, Mike, why don't you why don't you uh, introduce the three things, and we'll and then we'll start off with you know with number one. Yeah, well, just to echo what you said too, Bill. I mean, I would say the toughest thing that we have to deal with is Jesus is no longer here. Uh, right. Not only do the disciples have to deal with that, but it's a stumbling block today. People, I hear this all the time. Boy. I so wish Jesus was alive and a real person because then life would be so much easier because then I would just follow him. You know, I just got, you know, I don't, maybe he'd sell your car and walk around with him everywhere. Maybe he'd ride the bus with him or maybe he'd rent a bus and everybody be on it. I don't know how it would work, but. Well, he'd probably have a, a, a Facebook and an Instagram and we'd all follow him there and, <laughs> <laughs> and get his updates several times a day. And uh, it'd be great. Yeah, it, I showed my age there a little bit, didn't I? I did. Yeah, yeah. So there's probably some real truth to that. Um, but I think that so the questions the disciples were asking are the same questions we're asking. Like, Lord, if you're leaving, how can we be with you? Like, you've changed us these last few years, and so how how can we be with you? How how can you stay with us? And how how can this thing that we have going keep going? And I think that that's the core of what we wanted to talk about. And it's not a new subject either. This has been the subject of literally hundreds and even thousands of books, podcasts, sermons. Um, so we're not reinventing the wheel here, but sometimes you have to take things that are in the back of your mind, you know they're true, and bring them to the front of your mind mm -hmm. so that you can be reminded of what reality is. So, uh, and we're looking at through the lens of three things. And these three things, by the way, like I've said, have literally been around for hundreds of years as the core three things people do to stay close to the Lord and to be empowered by his Holy Spirit today. And the first one is prayer, uh, where we become people who follow Jesus's example. And I think Jesus has the perfect example in prayer, where we think of it in terms of he was, he was not present with the Father anymore physically, because he was physically present on the earth. So what did he do? He cultivated a prayer time, and he modeled for us how to do that. When someone's not present with you, who you want to be in relationship with, you pray. Uh, the second thing, is the word and we study the scriptures jesus of course modeled this by the way that he taught nearly everything that jesus taught is in the old testament in fact the more that you study about the new testament um, the more you realize what's so new about the new testament um, because everything jesus lived and breathed the old testament so much so that all of his teachings were derived from it and so he walked and embodied the word of god and he knew it so well it just naturally flowed off of his tongue and it connected him to God. And then the last piece that Jesus did a good job of, and we talked about this a little bit, is 
he was able to create a group around him of like-minded people who then uh, were able to do life together and strengthen each other and encourage each other. And, and that's the third part that we believe in is for lack of a better term, we'll call it fellowship and having people around you that believe and are moving in the same direction is one of the ways we stay close to Jesus. Yeah. yeah. So those are kind of the three things uh, that we think about prayer, the scriptures and fellowship. Yep. Yep. I know for me, <laughs> the, to the extent that I do those three things, like for sure, to that extent, it's either going to be a good day or not a good day in terms of, in terms of, you know, seeing what God's doing uh, in my life, being aware of needs. We talk about uh, being uh, aware of potential divine appointments, having, having those those uh those spiritual goggles on uh and and being able to really be used by god to the extent i'm able to have some time in prayer and and be in his word and be encouraged by by other brothers and sisters in christ to that extent things are going to happen amen couldn't so agree let's dive more in. yeah let's yeah. dive in so prayer number one well I don't know about you, Bill, but one of the things that I subscribe to is, uh, and again, I'm aging myself here, but I'm going to go ahead and say it, is the Nike model of prayer, which is just do it. Um, and before we even dig into how to pray and all that stuff, I found in my life, I just have to do it. Like you said, when I do it, life is so much better and so much different, because if I don't, uh, then I find myself being self-absorbed or other you know, my family absorbed, which is again, a version of self-absorbed, or I get caught up in the task or I start worrying about the future, or I'm thinking about the past and it, I get caught up in all these little things if I don't just do it. And yeah. I've learned that it for good or for bad, I have to do it. And so for me, that's the first thing that I think about when I think of prayer is it's something that I just have to do. I have to make it a, a priority every day to spend time with the Lord. And we'll talk about what that looks like too. I mean, but for me, that's the thing that stands out the most when I think of prayer. It's a self-discipline. It is something that I have to discipline myself to do. I don't naturally do it. I've yeah. been a pastor. I've been doing this for a very, very long time, this whole following Jesus thing. And I still don't naturally pray. Uh, I have to discipline myself to do it. I naturally want to do other stuff, which is just insane how sinful I am. I don't know. <laughs> What's your first thought when you think of prayer? I can relate. Well, you know, when I think about prayer, I think about how not good at it I am. <laughs> right. And, and, and I think, you know, like what we do now, Mike, with Legacy, we, we have so many conversations with people every day. And I think this is, I like what you said, just do it. Uh, but the reality is, uh, it's, it's hard. And, and, and we don't, we don't, um, for the most part, spend the time to pray, I guess, like most of us feel like we either want to or, or we should. Uh, but I, I've definitely changed the way I think about prayer over the years, though. And, and um, I think I think as a as a younger believer, uh, tend to think more about prayer as as um, sort of a, a shopping list of, of things that you kind of want God to do. Right. Right. <laughs> totally hear that. Yeah. You know, and, the magic genie. yeah. Yeah. The magic genie. And, uh, and, 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 uh, and I've definitely have, have gotten away from that. And, and so for me, prayer is much more about just talking to God about what's going on and, 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 um, expressing my trust in him for things that are going on and thanking him and it's it's much more relational and much less um prayer request driven yeah if that makes sense yeah well you know it's fascinating you say that because uh j.i packer in his book knowing god says you can tell the maturity of a believer by how they address uh god and he says that uh, mature believers ad ad address God as father. And, but it's exactly like you're saying though, it's, it's that thought of, I know I need you father. I know I need mm -hmm. your presence. I, I want to be with you. 
Uh, and there's something about that. And, and at the same time, when we go to our father with requests and, and those things too, we know that he provides, but, and that was the first thing when we came up with our list of what do we do and how do we pray? Cause that is kind of what the podcast is about. How do we stay with the Lord? Yeah. Um, that was one of the things that stood out to me too, is just being with God and his love for us. And I, I think that as we understand prayer and moving away from the shopping list, uh, because I don't even know how we get there, but I will say shopping lists are much easier to do than relational work. Um, it's much easier for me to give somebody a list of chores or things to do than it is to listen to them, to humble myself and to spend time. And, um, and I think that's true with the Lord too. And, but I think of the promises and all the things related to him. And, uh, like Jesus says, he's the bread of life. And I, that is so powerful to think of. Uh, if we just pause on that one thing for a moment, he promises us that he is the bread of life. In other words, we can get actual sustenance for who we are and how we live by being in a relationship with him. It will change us so much that it feeds our souls, which yeah. we desperately yeah. need. I love that Chesterton quote where he says, every uh, man that is knocking on the door of a brothel is searching for the heart of God. And I, I just love that idea that we have this, this hole in our soul that Jesus can fill and it's real and powerful. And I want to read this uh, from Ephesians too, because this is one of those favorite verses for me. When I think of prayer and I think of what the apostle Paul, how he envisioned it. And uh, this is what he said. When I think of the wisdom and scope of his plan, God's plan, I fall down on my knees and I pray to the father of all the great family of God. So that's you, me, that's everybody, right? some of them already in heaven and some down here on earth, that out of his glorious unlimited resources, he will give you the mighty inner strengthening of his Holy Spirit. And I pray that Christ will be more and more at home in your hearts, living within you as you trust in him. May your roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvelous love. And may you be able to feel and understand as all God's children should, how long, how wide, how deep, and how high is his love really is. And to experience this love for yourselves. Mm -hmm. Though it is so great that you will never see the end of it or fully know or understand it. And so it, at last, you'll be filled up with God himself. And as I think about that passage, I'm reminded that this relationship with God is not just something on paper. And it's not just something in our heads. It's not just something for somebody else. The Apostle Paul saw God as real, alive, and his love in particular transforms us and changes us. And as we learn to step into that love, surrender ourselves to that love, and, and be with the Father, as you were describing, he changes us. Yeah. As you were reading that, it made me think about uh, that, that passage in Philippians uh, 3.7, where Paul's talking about man, this is the most important thing. He said, uh, but whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him. So that's the perspective, you know? Yeah. This, this is it. This, this is the greatest thing. This is the most important thing. It's who we are. It's what we're about. It's our life. And nothing well, else told, compares. Well, as you read that, Bill, I was reminded of the, the old hymn, I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather have him than riches untold. I'd rather have him than houses or lands. I'd rather be led by his nail pierced hand. And then it goes on. I'd rather have Jesus than men's applause. And, and be rather faithful to his dear cause. I'd rather have Jesus than worldwide fame. I'd rather be true to his holy name. He's fairer than the lilies of the rarest bloom. He's sweeter than the honey from the comb. He's all the hungering spirit needs. I'd rather have Jesus and let him lead. And then the refrain to this song, I mean, you probably heard the song before, of course, but then it's, then to be a king of a vast domain or to be held in Sid's dread sway, I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today and as you're reading i just that's what I just kept thinking about is that old hymn uh i'd rather have jesus than anything and 
that's, did you, that's the bottom Did you part. have that memorized or did, you, or did you have that up on your screen someplace so you read that? I refuse to comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. That's impressive. So here's another uh, uh, passage from, from uh, uh, Ephesians and, and talk about prayer. It, and uh, this, this was Paul's prayer request. So yeah, pretty good, pretty good uh, like thing. Well, what, what, what was Paul asking for prayer about? This is Ephesians 6, 18 through 20. It says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. So, so that's good. So pray on all kinds of occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests uh, with this in mind be alert oh that's a good one be alert yeah <laughs> ever have have trouble being alert or, or or staying focused when you're praying uh he says so be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints keep praying for everybody pray also for me so here's here's paul's prayer request pray also for me that whenever i open my mouth words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. So ordinary people doing extraordinary things, how's that going to happen? It's going to happen through prayer. Yeah. 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 You know, I, some other things that I think about that are kind of just simple things that are part of prayer that I think are key yeah. is be thankful. Um, and if we're coming up on Thanksgiving here in, in, a, in a week and uh, I, or excuse me, a month in a week. Um, and it's, I always think of November, they call it Thanksgiving month now, you know, it's like your birthday is every <laughs> birthday month and all this crazy stuff. But um, I think thankfulness is so fascinating to me because we as Christians who believe in the sovereignty and providence of God, we believe that everything good that we experience in life comes from mm -hmm. the hand of God. Yeah. And, and so we have a reason to be thankful. Other people who are thankful, um, they don't really know who they're thanking. Uh, but I, I've learned in my own life that every day being thankful for, and it doesn't have to be the same list every time, but I find that every day if I'm thankful for things uh, and from big things to small things. And I mean, I've, I'm, you know, I, I've been known on a golf course when I had a good shot to mutter, mutter under my breath, thank you, Jesus, you know, like <laughs> little things like that, where yeah. I don't have to take anything for granted or credit for anything, but just thankful for that. And every day when I wake up, I, I, the first thing I think of is, is leaning over to my wife, if she's still sleeping and thank you, God, for the gift that she is to me, yeah. uh, you know, and thank you, also, of course, then I go into my kids and I think of Christ and I think of all of that and, and it changes my countenance. Yeah. I mean, do you have a thankful pattern too that you do or anything like that? Have you found that to be helpful? Oh, absolutely. It, it, and you're right. It, it, it changes your countenance, your perspective, and it, and it doesn't matter what's going on in, in big picture, little picture. It doesn't matter it, it, when you when you are thankful it reminds you of the goodness of God and the faithfulness of God. Yeah. I, I, it's not really specifically about that, but I just happen to be looking here at, at, at Philippians uh, 1, 3. Paul says, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy. And, 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 and that's one of the things that I'm always thankful for. I think about the people that, that God's surrounded me with and the people that, that I get to be involved with now with legacy and, and 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 i i i thank my god every time i remember those people it, you know isn't that cool well and that's one of the things that i've learned too and just shifting gear slightly is people say i don't know how to pray mike i couldn't do it i don't i i've i've tried to as paul described it they have that spirit filled prayer so what i'll do is i'll ask the lord to bring people to mind to pray for and the but you're right the first thing i do is thankful you know, be thankful yeah. I have a relationship with them and, and I'll, I'll be praying for people. And so whenever the Lord brings something to mind, I assume I'm to pray for them, but I also almost always will do some sort of follow-up with them. Like, Hey, praying for you today. Um, and almost always I'll hear back from them. You wouldn't believe what's going on right now. And, 
the Lord is so good with that type of stuff. When we, when we do um, take that time to pray for others as, as he leads us. Now, it doesn't mean I'm against, I have that up app on my phone too, which I think is great where you, it gives you prayer requests each time that you look at it so you can know and be in that habit and discipline of praying for things. You know, Jesus talked about that in Luke 18 with the, the persistent widow who demanded justice. She just kept coming back and finally the judge relented. And that's sometimes what prayer requires is that persistent prayer. Uh, so that's good too. Um, what other practices have you found helpful, Bill, when you're thinking of prayer? Well, I, I was going to just make one more comment about, about the Thanksgiving thing, because I think one of the biggest things that, that, that uh, it gets people down and gets people off of focusing on Jesus is worry. And, 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 yeah. and so much of the time we have so many things that are, that are coming in um, on us from outside of ourselves and, and from, whether it's work and family and friends and finances and, and you know, go, the list is endless. And there's always yeah. lots and lots of things to worry about. But listen to what Paul says in Philippians 4. Um, well, I'm going to start with verse 4. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. But here's, the, here's the main verse, verse 6. It says, do not be anxious about anything. Or, and, or in other words, don't worry about anything. But in everything, so wait, in everything or in, in most things? No, in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. And I love that he included yeah. that in there. By prayer and petition, yeah, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And so uh, I, I just think that's, for me, that's another huge one. Uh, and, and, and this is where, so like style of prayer, oftentimes uh, when I'm writing in my journal, I'll, I'll, um, I'll write down some of the things that are maybe some of the things that, that it'd be easy to be worrying about. Yeah. And instead, I just thank God and just, Lord, I thank you so much that you've got total control of this. And I think, oh, that's good. I thank you, Lord, that I can trust you with that and those kind of things. Well, there's a lot more we could say about prayer. We have to, we want to tips the other topics, but let me just say this to, to kind of close it down. And, and we're kind of talking about around this, but part of prayer is just surrendering yourself to the Lordship of Christ. Yeah, yeah that's Part it. of prayer is just saying, Lord, I am your servant. Have your way in my life. It's repenting. Lord, I've been doing my own way. And I, here's how I've been doing my own way. Forgive me, restore me, renew me and put me on your way. And empower me and lead me and we could do a whole podcast on that but learning and part of that prayer and this is uh, i would even say one of the core things of prayer is surrendering your will to god's will that's what jesus modeled for us yeah yeah and and again i'm just going to leave it at that uh but there's again we'll circle back to that in future podcasts the second thing that we had talked about was uh a way that we grow and the way that we're with christ is we read the bible and and just to, to hit, a, hit this with the ground running a little bit here, I mean, this is God's word. This is Jesus's word for us today. This is God's word for us today. So as we think about being with the Lord, we may, he may not come and speak to us every morning uh, and, you know, like a, a person to person. But as we study his word and as we ask the Holy Spirit to illumine our minds and our hearts and our thoughts, and as we present our wills before Christ at the same time, he speaks to us through the words that he spoke to others. And the one thing I love about the scriptures, well, there's many things, but one of the main things I love is God is unchanging. So if he's speaking something to people 4,000 years ago, his truth is still real for us today. Now, it may not look exactly the same for them as they did 4,000 years ago in our world, but that truth is still real. God's character doesn't change. God's call in our lives doesn't change. Yeah. Uh, looks different for different times and epics. And that's where the scriptures are so helpful because, you know, part of what we're looking for is we're wanting to be with Jesus is, well, I don't really know much. And we want our mind to be renewed. The apostle Paul said for us to be in Corinthians, to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And that's such an important piece and part to, I think, 
yeah. walking yeah. and being with Jesus. Yeah. And the whole idea of reading the Bible, that's, that's something, again, that I think is a challenge for people. Um, often they don't know what to read. How do I read it? Uh, should I should I be in one of these read the Bible in a year programs? Should I just like open my Bible up and just trust God that he's going to just <laughs> close my eyes and, and, and okay, that's what I'm supposed to read today. Uh, should I be reading some uh, book that's going to walk me through uh, like a commentary or something? Uh, how do I, how do I do this? How do I prioritize how to spend my time in reading the Bible? And, and, uh, and, and the answer is maybe in some ways all of the above, uh, but yeah. just for me, the way I prefer to read the Bible is, is to be reading through a book in the Bible and to read it slowly rather than fast. And I would, right. rather, I would rather spend um, a half an hour focused on a few verses than to spend a half an hour trying to cram in x number of chapters because that's what i'm obligated to read to keep up with my my bible reading plan but that's just me and i know other people love love uh reading plans too so well i've done it both ways i've done the read the bible uh through the year a few times you know like i read the old testament once new testament twice with the plan i use i've done the read a book of the bible and take a year to go through one book i've done all kinds of different yeah. things and again, I would probably put this in the just do it category too. Of mm -hmm. um, even if you just picked a random verse, that's better than doing nothing. And <laughs> I, so, you know, I yeah. think I like the idea of having some sort of connection with it so that you're able to, like you to journal afterwards. Right. I often will do my podcast, my daily nugget podcast afterwards. Like I'll be reading whatever I'm doing for the daily nugget is one of my primary devotions. And, yeah. and that helps me a lot because then I kind of get my audio journal uh, in some ways. But yeah, yeah. I, there's some way having a mechanism that, that you teach it or you, you journal about it or something that really helps you listen. And, and that was one of the things I was going to say is when we approach the scriptures, though, we want to approach them with humility and we want to approach them with Lord speak to me. Uh, like I mentioned before, uh, because otherwise we can become the opposite of what Jesus wants. We can become the Pharisees. We can become people who have all this knowledge, but don't have a heart for the Lord. And our goal is to have this heart for the Lord, like the disciples did, where they were with Jesus. And all of a sudden God started using them powerfully because of that humble spirit that they had. And, where we get into trouble is when we think we know everything or we're studying so that we can prove things to other people and mm -hmm. you know or make ourselves sound smart or spiritual and that's where we get into trouble and yeah so I, even when we're thinking about people who are overwhelmed that's a great place to be to study the scriptures because then you pray and you say lord i'm i'm not a super bible scholar but i i want to hear from you and boy you'll be surprised what god would do with that prayer yeah I, yeah wouldn't you say yeah and and I think I, I like what you said about the the just do it thing. And uh, there there are lots and lots of ways. I mean, Mike, you do a great job on the Daily Nugget podcast. I mean, for some people, that's that's how they get their daily uh, Bible reading is by listening to the podcast. And others, uh, I know, sign up on on one of the Bible apps to get you know they get a verse that pops up on their on their their screen every yeah. day, and that's and that's what they do. And uh, uh, you know, I'm into uh, lifting weights and going to the gym, and and uh, I, I've always said that that, uh, that that's a great metaphor for life uh, in, yeah. in a lot of ways. And and um, because people say, well, you know, what should I do when I go in to lift weights? Should I what what muscle group should <laughs> I focus on or whatever? And 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 I would say, you know, there are lots of ways to do it, and and I think that there's some better ways than others. But the bottom line is you know what, if you're, if you're getting in the gym, you know, four or five days a week or whatever, I mean, you're going to be just fine and, and, and you're going to do great. Now, could, could it be, is it kind of a good, better, best? Yeah, I think so. And I think that's the same case with, with uh, reading the Bible. I think maybe there's, there's, there's sort of a, a good, better, best, or, or maybe multiple bests, you know, but, uh, but better some than nothing at all. Uh, yeah. And also, I think also I, I I like what you said too about about this this idea of of 
well, I think you said this. If you didn't say it, at least I I thought about it when you were talking a minute ago. But but the idea that 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 it's you don't just read the Bible to check something off a list, but but you you read the Bible with the idea that God's going to speak to us and that, he, that yep. he's going to he's going to show us uh, things to reveal truth in our life and 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 give us practical things and. And I, I, I really believe that one of the great things that we can do when we read the Bible, the reason I enjoy journaling is yeah. it helps me remember what I read so that I can then be able to recall it at future times or to be able to share it with somebody. And I, and I, and I love that passage in James. Mike, we were talking about this before we started the podcast. You brought yeah. this verse up. James, in James uh, one twenty two, it says, don't merely listen to the word on Mike's podcast <laughs> or, or just read it or whatever. Uh, yeah. because, because when you do, when you, all you do is listen to it or just read it, it says that you're deceiving yourselves. You got to yep. do what it says. Anyone yeah. who listens to the word, but doesn't do what it says. It's like someone who, who looks in the mirror and then after going away, you, you immediately forget what you look like. But the, but the person who looks intently into the perfect law, that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he's heard or what he's read, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. Yeah. Yeah. And Jesus summed it up pretty simple. Hey, if you love me, obey me. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like there's that sense where we can't just be people who, who study the word. We have to be people who actually do what it says. And Obviously, we're, we're going to have to hit the next podcast. We'll, we'll talk about what it is like to be with others and how that empowers us to be closer to the Lord. And uh, because we got so excited with prayer and so excited with the word, <laughs> and we'll get so excited with that, too, because both of us have a that's we, we designed a whole ministry around being with others. So next week's podcast is going to be fantastic uh, as we talk about that. But as we wind it down today, just a reminder. You can catch all of our stuff at r2legacy.com. We really do appreciate you listening. And uh, if, if we could add, you know, just a couple of things, it would be simply like us, uh, share us. Uh, I had a friend of mine who I've known forever, and he's back, back one of our legacy leaders now, who signed up for our leadership program and everything. He's like, Mike, I didn't even know you had a podcast that was on discipleship. And you know what? I bet you, you, the people who are listening to this, have friends who don't even know that this podcast exists and, but they might be drawn to become disciples and make disciples. And so share it with them, mm -hmm. uh, post it on your, your, your Facebook, your Instagram, your whatever social media you have text yeah. it out to a few friends uh, who may need to grow in the Lord and who might just be encouraging for them and might help build them up. We'd really appreciate that. Uh, but all that to say, thanks for listening. And we really do hope that you are a member and let us all be people who make disciples today. Amen. Amen.